Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. The family of a Dearborn man who is at the center of an ethnic intimidation case speaking out tonight explaining his history and why they believe he shouldn't be in a jail cell right now. Those charges were filed after Hassan Choker was allegedly threatening children and their parents in front of Temple Beth L in Bloomfield Township. Then even more disturbing conduct when he faced a judge, of course. Jacqueline Francis live at the Oakland County Jail tonight with the new development. Jacqueline. We're told Hassan Choker has been on a hunger strike since arriving here at the Oakland County Jail late last week. That's according to his brother, who we're talking to tonight as he shares his story, saying there's more to it. This is a picture of the good times. Hassan Choker and his brother Hussein grabbing food together shortly before the pandemic began and things took a turn. Coronavirus came, he got sick and the, the virus and the, the PTSD from losing his business, all this took him to like a different a mental state of mind. This is when his mental health crisis started. So did his legal troubles. In 2020, Hassan was charged with assault with a deadly weapon and assaulting a police officer. The incident stemming from an angry outburst at the Islamic Center of America. But it's his recent behavior that's garnered the most attention. He was arrested last Friday, accused of threatening preschoolers and their parents in front of Temple Bethel in Bloomfield Township charged with two felony counts of ethnic intimidation. He did not do things that were right when he went to Temple Bel El. That's not right. That was wrong. His brother says there's no merit to any of the charges against him, saying he needs a psychologist, not a jail cell. And every time that he had a mental health episode, they will throw him behind bars. And when we asked for him as family to be petitioned to get mental health treatment, they never ever helped us or reached out. They left us crying in our houses. He says these mental health issues explain his brother's recent outbursts in court and his ongoing hunger strike behind bars. Bond is set at $1 million for the ethnic intimidation charges. If released, he'll be sent to Wayne County Jail for those previous assault charges. Reporting live at the Oakland County Jail, Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. All right, Jacqueline, we are following breaking news right now in Detroit's west side. A fire that started inside a vacant home has now spread to both neighboring homes. This is happening on Stople, west of Livernoy, north of McNichols on the west side of town. One of the homes, it is already believed, is a complete loss. They are still looking into the cause, but of course right now, prime issue, getting the fire out. Brittany Griner is on her way home. The WNBA star has been detained in Russia since February of this year. Her case drew international attention with advocates demanding her release and the release of Metro Detroit native Paul Whelan. President Joe Biden says efforts to bring Griner home took painstaking and intense negotiations. After nine months spent in Russian detention, WNBA star Brittany Griner is finally free. What's your mood? Happy. <laughs> President Joe Biden sitting alongside Griner's wife in the Oval Office as he spoke to the Olympic gold medalist over the phone. I'm proud that today we had made one more family whole again. Griner was arrested on drug charges at a Russian airport last February, testifying she inadvertently packed the cannabis oil found in her luggage. She endured mistreatment in a show trial in Russia with characteristic grit and incredible dignity. Griner's lawyer confirming the release was part of a prisoner swap with convicted arms dealer Victor Boot. It is my job as president of the United States to make the hard calls and protect American citizens everywhere in the world. The swap did not include Paul Whelan, a Metro Detroit man that the State Department has declared wrongfully detained in Russia. Unfortunately, the choice became to either bring Brittany home or no one. Speaking on the phone from a remote penal colony, Whelan expressed disappointment as he approaches four years in Russian custody. This is a precarious situation that needs to be resolved quickly. My bags are packed. I'm ready to go home. I just need an airplane to come and get me. Secretary of State Antony Blinken promises efforts to secure Whelan's release will continue. We will never relent until Paul, and for that matter, every other U.S. national held hostage or wrongfully detained abroad is free. And Brittany Griner is expected to land at San Antonio's Kelly Field sometime overnight. We will bring you the very latest on her arrival on Local 4 News starting at 4.30 a.m. 
Move your poles. Rather unusual call the mayor of Dearborn Heights put out earlier this week, but as we found out, it was warranted. Sean Lay live tonight in Dearborn Heights. The mayor is talking about abandoned utility poles that can be found in neighborhoods all across the city, as you found, Sean. I had to see this for myself, Devin. Count them with me. Here's one, two, three, four, five. On this corner alone, the mayor of Dearborn Heights says he's finding them all over the place. It's really unclear who's responsible for all the polls, but he's telling utilities and businesses responsible for them tonight, use them or lose them. It's not nice to be left some, it looks like a garbage. This in isn't a storage our, area. Yeah, in front of our yard. When Mimosa Mustafa got home tonight, she almost tripped over the five, count them, five power poles left in her yard. They have to go, they mess up the lawn. They don't look good. Also not looking good, a broken barricade dumped in her front yard. Some kind of work was being done here, but now the poles have been left behind. Dearborn Heights Mayor Bill Bozzi says there are pole problems citywide. They're scattered throughout the city, and uh, a, a lot of residents are calling the city hall. Also, they've been addressed at a council meetings that we need to get rid of them. So now Bozzi is putting the utility companies on notice who are responsible for poles left around neighborhoods and yards to use them or lose them. Public Works is poised to come cut them up and haul them off. Uh, I actually did a tour of the city uh, the last couple of days driving around. Uh, I've, I've counted at least 20, 25 poles, you know, just in the last day, day and a half of driving around. Whose poles are they? Mayor Bozzi has called and emailed utility companies and has gotten no response. They've been here for several months. Some of them been here for about eight, nine months. Back here live, we just noticed this one has DTE written on it. The mayor wants residents to call in and report polls where they see them so they can map them out and know how many they have here. In the meantime, they're giving those responsible for them until the end of the month. If they don't come pick them up, they're going to chop them up and haul them away. Back to you. That's a new one. Really strange problem. All right, Sean. A driver suspected of hitting a 15-year-old girl walking to school is in custody tonight. This all happened around 7 this morning as the 15-year-old was crossing Newburgh Road at Marquette on her way to John Glenn High School in Westland. Police say someone in an SUV ran a red light, hit the girl, and kept going. The teen was rushed to St. Mary's Hospital in Livonia with serious injuries. Westland police say they've located the suspected driver and taken that person into custody. A local urologist known for treating hockey players is facing more sexual assault charges. Dr. Zvilevan, or Levran is facing two additional charges now out of Farmington and Farmington Hills. The counts include second and fourth degree criminal sexual conduct. Dr. Levran is accused of abusing players during physical exams. Police do believe there are more victims out there. Tomorrow, Van Dyke Public Schools are going to be closed due to excessive illnesses. That's right. The district posted a message on its website this afternoon saying all schools in the district will be closed tomorrow. They say there are just too many illnesses going around to safely run the buildings. The district is not sure which illnesses are causing the closures, but they come amid spikes in COVID, flu, and RSV. Live look at the downtown skyline on this Thursday night. Temperatures hovering just above freezing. That's right, but uh, we're going to get a taste of winter tomorrow. Kim Adams tracking a little bit of snow moving our way, Kim. Well, the key word there is just a little bit. Most of the day tomorrow will be dry, and then later on in the evening is when we do expect a few very light snow showers to move through Metro Detroit, possibly even mixing with a little bit of rain. Temperatures already down to the low 30s in Pontiac, 36 in Adrian, 33 in Howell, 36 in the city of Detroit. And that's pretty much the story across the area, but we've got a few clouds in place, so we only expect temps to dip down into about the upper 20s, uh, maybe 26, 27 in Pontiac and some of the northern suburbs. Otherwise, you can see this satellite here. Everything is dry. There's nothing going on except a little clearing off to our southwest. So we might temporarily clear out in the early morning hours tomorrow, but clouds will quickly fill in in the afternoon. And anytime after four o'clock is when we expect those snow showers to move in from west to east. So if you live on the east side, that snow will come a little bit later, west side a little sooner. I'll break it down hour by hour for you using ExactTrack 4D radar and our computer models coming up in just a few minutes.